dominating function is going to override and, and make it look more like it. So in this case, the dominating function, the outside function, is e to a power. I would expect this to look more like an exponential curve than I would a straight line. Now, you can't always go by that. There are some of these that kind of fool us a little bit. But that's another way for you to, to, uh, to determine if you've got a composite function and which one's the inside and which one's the outside. Okay, so for this one, the inside function is x cubed. The outside function is a natural log. So dy dx. We want the derivative of the outside function. So this would be like having, having our smiley faces in here. Okay. Well, what is the derivative of a quantity, of the natural log of a quantity? One divide by that, okay, and of course we're going to uh, write the quantity that we have there. So this would be one divide by x cubed. No matter how complex that quantity is, that's your denominator. No matter how complex, that's your denominator. Times the derivative with respect to what variable? Y. Why is it x? Because it's the input variable of your function. I have to stop you every now and then because if you don't have an x there, you got to remember you can't just throw an x around. Okay? You have to use the variable, your input variable there. Okay, the uh, derivative with respect to x of what? Yeah, your inside function. So this is your inside function. And so this is the derivative. <coughs> yeah, we'll make that cube. Okay, so we have 1 divide by x cubed times 3x squared. So our derivative would be 3 divide by x. And now it says add a point. So at x is equal to 1, we would have 3 divided by 1, or simply 3. Kind of easy stuff. Getting to the point where you're seeing these a little easier. Heather, do you see composite functions? Okay, don't lose them. Okay, let's go on. Another really good, interesting problem. Take a moment. What derivative rules are you going to have to use in this one? Take a moment to consider that. Okay, let me ask you the question I always start with. If I told you, Astra, that x had a value of 7, where would you start? Uh-uh, it's Astra's. Oh, do you, okay, pass it off to Sam then. Okay, so the first thing you would do is put 7 in, and the first thing, the first function or the first action you would have to take would be not really. I think the first thing you would do is to take 7 minus 2 and 7 plus 2. In other words, what I'm looking at, and you could break it down even further if you wanted to, but I'm looking at the quotient is the first. Okay. After you have the quotient's value, then you would do what? Then you would take the cube root. And what's the last thing you would do? So what is the outside function? Okay, now there's actually three functions here. It's actually three. This is a chain of three if we wanted to break it down that way. So we have the rational function inside the cube root inside the natural log. Okay, it's actually three there. Okay, so we take a look at the derivative with respect to x, and we take the derivative of the outside function. This is where I'm saying that no matter how complex, if I were to put smiley faces, I have to put them all over this. And the derivative of the natural log of something is that whole thing. 
Yeah. That whole thing. Then I have the derivative with respect to x of what? Yeah, so you might at some point might have wanted to do this. Whoops. Make that an x. Okay. Now let me let me stop right there and talk to you about this a moment. If I gave you the natural log of something to a power, do you know those natural log rules? The log to a power is the same thing as the power of the log. Remember that? And the log of a quotient is the same thing as um, yeah, thank you. Now you have to answer my question. So the log of a quotient is the difference of the two logs? Mm -hmm. You know, if you see this log rule here, could you use that instead? Yeah. Yeah, you could do this work first and then take the derivatives if you want. Okay? So that's kind of like left for it as an extra problem if you want to do that. We we'll go back and do it this way. Now I'm going to continue on my way here. Let's see. Yeah, bring that down a little bit. Because now I'm, I'm going to work it this direction. So now I have the derivative of the inside. So this is going to be um, the derivative of um, x minus 2 divided by x plus 2 to the one-third power, because I want to practice my composite functions, my chain rule. So I have 1 divided by the cube root of the derivative of this will be one-third of the quantity to the negative two-thirds power times the derivative with respect to x of the quotient. Okay, so the first thing we had was the derivative of the natural log. That brought us to here, and then we have to take the derivative of the composite function. Okay, so I've got the outside function of the composite function, but now I have to take the derivative of the inside which means I have to take the derivative of a quotient. I'll try and write smaller here. Now, again, doing some algebra along the way. This one-third times this quantity to the two-thirds can be the same thing as one divided by three times the cube root of x minus 2 divided by x plus 2. I could square everything inside, or because multiplication is commutative, I can square everything of the cube root. Did you catch that? If I have if I put it this way, I've got uh, something to the one-third squared, or if I put it inside, I have something squared to the one-third. It's all the same when I multiply. Is there an advantage to that? Now look what I'm going to multiply together. That looks pretty nice to me. I've got something, the cube root of this quantity, times the three times the square of the cube root of that. So I'm going to be able to simplify that. Okay, now the derivative of this. I've got a quotient, so I've got to take the denominator times the derivative with respect to x of the numerator. We already discussed it. It's minus the numerator times the derivative with respect to x of the denominator, all of it over the square of the denominator. 
Okay. If I have the cube root of something and then I have the square of the cube root of something, how many cube roots of something do I now have? So now I have the cube root cubed. Okay, so I have 1 divided by 3, the quantity x minus 2 divided by x plus 2, times, not a simple problem here. You might be able to finish this before the class is over. Well, again, if I have the cube root of something times the square of the cube root, I end up with the cube of the cube root. I have one of these times two of these. That's to the third power. Okay, and it's the cube root, so I have the cube of the cube root. Okay. This is the algebra part, right? Yeah. I know, I know. But you know, but we haven't really taken all the derivatives yet, so you know, combine your algebra along the way. Um, derivative of x minus two is one minus the quantity x minus two times the derivative of x plus two, one again. Now two more steps of algebra, okay? Yeah, it, it gets to be a little intense. I'm just gonna say, you guys can verify this. Verify my answer. I have four divided by three it's a 3 there, if I can get it to write. 3, there we go. The quantity x minus 2 times the quantity x plus 2. What happened to all the others? Well, check them and see. Okay, they all kind of fall apart, fall out there. Now, the rest of what we have here, we've got more work with the um, natural log functions and the exponential. You know, what if it's not e to a power? What if it's 5 to a power? How do I deal with the derivative of 5 to the square root of x plus 2 divided by cube root of x minus 2? How do I deal with that? Okay, uh, we've got that to go through. Um, we then have some application problems that I want to make sure that we are looking at. So we've got a little more work to do with this section. And uh, we'll make a decision on you know, what we'll do next Thursday. But this Thursday, we'll continue with 3.4, I'm pretty sure. If we can, we'll get into 3.5. That's another fun one. That's called implicit differentiation. What if I want to differentiate with respect to two variables, not just one? It's really not that hard. You've been kind of doing that already. You just didn't realize it. OK.